Another police officer was shot and killed yesterday in Maryland, making him the second police officer killed in the United States in just 12 hours after the early morning death of a police officer in Alabama. With safety being the focal point of our nation's conversation right now, how are we ensuring the safety of the men and women who put their lives on the line for us to protect us every single day? Joining me now, Darren Porcher, he's a retired NYPD lieutenant and former U.S. Army officer, along with Stephen Loomis, yeah. retired president of the Cleveland Poli Police Patrolmen's Association and currently a detective in the Cleveland Police Department. Uh, let me, I'll start with you, Stephen. It's, it's, it's remarkable how many police officers have died, have been killed, rather, this year. And really, you don't even hardly hear about it. And I know there's been a lot of, a lot of headlines this year, but... These are the folks that keep us safe. If we can't somehow make sure that they're safe, then I think we're all in trouble. Yeah, absolutely. And if, uh, I, I think it, it speaks to the violence um, and the types of violent crimes and acts that are being perpetrated out there. You know, we see an increase in homicide rates in just about every large metropolitan city in the country. Um, but at the same time, these, these folks, if they're willing to shoot at police officers, um, they're willing to shoot at anybody, and I think that one thing goes along right along with the other. Uh, what do you make of it, Darren? Well, attack on law enforcement is attack on us all because law Absolutely. enforcement is our first line of defense. And when we look at this rise, this increase in police shootings, it looks like we're going to eclipse the numbers, the dangerous numbers of 2016. Because in 2016, we had the highest number of officer fatalities as it relates to shootings in the last five years. So it's a societal issue that we need to get behind law enforcement because, as I mentioned, ultimately, they're our first line of defense. And I think a lot of this dates back to the Ferguson um, incident, where we had the, um, the Ferguson effect is something we refer to, whereas officers were being ostracized for merely doing the job. This is something that dates back to the Obama administration. But then it moved further when we look at the Eric Garner situation, and then we take, in, take into account the Philando Castile incident, where we had someone in retribution shoot and kill officers in, um, in Dallas. So all of those, uh, the collaboration of those events is something that's consistently moved forward with this anti-police sentiment, right. and that's why we're in this position we're in. Stephen, would you consider it open season on police officers? Do you think you feel like it's that bad right now? Well, I, 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 it certainly is, it's, certainly is bad, um, and it's perpetrated by the false narrative that we continuously hear from a very, very small segment of society. 99% of the people out here um, just want to live in peace. They want their law enforcement. They want to support their law enforcement. Um, they're horrified at some of the numbers and the, the budget reductions and things like that. So we're seeing an upclick in that. Um, and people are realizing it now. So, um, yeah, open season right. is, is uh, we're trained differently now. Um, you know, we have these consent decrees and things like that that are, that are kind of handcuffing the police officers. The Ferguson effect is absolutely in place right now. Uh, police officers across this country are not doing the proactive policing that they want to do um, well, on that because note, of that. On that note, I want to ask you guys, because we just had developments in uh, last week's tragic school shooting in Broward County. We actually have Broward County Sheriff Scott Israel announcing during a news conference here not long ago that Deputy Scott uh, Peterson, who was at the school in Parkland, Florida, he waited outside the building for about four minutes without ever going in. Now, he's resigned after he was uh, suspended without pay. Uh, Darren, uh, you know, the initial reaction that I'm getting on social media is that people are, are, are shocked, upset, offended, and, you know, and calling, this, calling him a coward. You know, maybe we'll get more details, but the narrative is that this is his job. He was, you know, this is what he signed up for and, and to spring into action, and he didn't. Well, at this stage, we're speaking at a place, from a place of conjecture. But when I look at that compound, this is a compound that houses 3,000-plus students, and you only had one armed officer. That armed officer is generally referred to as a resource officer. Right, but he was, on, he was on duty. He was a deputy sheriff. He was on duty. If it was you and you heard those bullets being fired, would, would you have waited four minutes? Well, it goes back to my, um, my initial statement. This is a 3,000 student compound. No, but would compound. you have waited, though? That's I wouldn't have saying. waited, but how long did it take and where was he positioned at the time of the offense? And this is something I blame on the executive branch of that particular police department because in no way, shape, or form should one officer be responsible for 3,000-plus um, students at that particular school. So when we take in consideration the, sure, the slowed sure, response... Sure, sure. 
I mean, I think that it's tragic to say the least, but we need a more empirical assessment before we can judge him as to what happened. Stephen, there's no doubt about that. Uh, uh, you agree with that? Okay, I wanted to get a, 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 your quick thoughts on that. Obviously, we'll get more details, but the, the notion that he, was, uh, that he was suspended without pay and then he resigned on his own just adds even more, uh, you know, makes it a more curious and if not more heartbreaking situation. Gentlemen, thank you both very much and thank you for your service.